summary of book third. It is more difficult to characterize the English poetry of the 18th century than that of any other, for it was an age not only of spontaneous transition, but of bold experiment. It includes not only such divergences of thought as distinguish the rape of the lock from the parish register, but such vast contemporaneous differences as lie between Pope and Collins, Burns and Cowper. Yet we may clearly trace three leading moods or tendencies. The aspects of courtly or educated life represented by, represented by Pope and carried to exhaustion by his followers. The poetry of nature and of man viewed through a cultivated and at the same time an impassioned frame of mind by Collins and Gray. Lastly, the study of vivid and simple narrative, including natural description, begun by Gay and Thompson, pursued by Burns and others in the North, and established in, established in England by Goldsmith, Percy, Crabbe, and Cowper. Great varieties in style accompanied these diversities in aim. Poets could not always distinguish the manner suitable for subjects so far apart, and the union of the language of courtly and of common life exhibited most conspicuously by Burns, has given a tone to the poetry of that century, which is better explained by reference to its historical origin than by naming it in the common criticism of our day artificial. There is again a nobleness of thought, a courageous aim at high, and, in a strict sense, manly excellence in many of the writers nor can that period be justly termed tame and wanting in originality which produced poems such as Pope's satires, Gray's odes, and elegy. The ballads of Gay and Carey, the songs of Burns and Cowper, in truth poetry at this, as at all times, was a more or less unconscious mirror of the genius of the age, and the brave and admirable spirit of inquiry which made the 18th century the turning time in European civilization is reflected faithfully in its verse. An intelligent reader will find the influences of Newton as markedly in the poems of Pope as of Elizabeth in the plays of Shakespeare. On this great subject, however, these indications must here be sufficient. <laughs>